Hi, so today I'm going to be trying a different way of doing these videos. I move the camera up here so you can see the multimeter, you can see what's on the table, you can see the tools, so I don't always have to move this crap around and jiggle the camera so that you can see the meter. Also, when we decide to do a video over there in the other station, rather than me having to move the camera and redo the wires and the setup, I can just take that from where it is right now and go, doop. Because right now, if I try to make a direct line over there, the monitor, the speakers, and all the stuff gets in the way. But from up there, I can just go a little tilt. It's interesting since I do have a... Uh, how, do how do I put this? There, is, uh, there are quite a few videos that we've done that just failed for really stupid reasons. So there are videos that we've done that failed because the, dr the drive was full. There are a bunch of videos before I reinstalled the capture card drivers that failed simply because halfway through the capture, it was not capturing. And, you, and I can catch it. Like when I'm st sitting in front of you, I can catch it. But if I'm watching while Jason's doing something, I don't catch it. And that sucks. And I, but I also, I got the, the capture thing fixed. I reinstalled the driver. The card still sucks. It does some banding stuff sometimes, but it's not worth spending 900 bucks on a different card to fix. I got this little HDMI, uh, HDMI s splitter box. So it has four inputs and two outputs. So I can change what each monitor sees. So I can, use, I can display my microscope on Jason's monitor, which is also the student station. I can have Jason's microscope show up on my capture card and my monitor. I can split uh, his to both. Uh, it, it's really cool. So right now, instead of having to rewire everything to do a different video, I just hit a button and turn that around. So I'm very happy for workflow, at least. Hopefully, the next time we do a video, it doesn't. Actually, I'm kind of happy because the last video, that, I think my computer is on my side because the last video would have made me look like an idiot and the computer fucked up and didn't record it. And it's like, you know, I can't really be that mad at that. So this machine supposedly has no backlight. It was sent board only, which sucks because I'm going to send it back and it's still going to have no backlight. That's usually what happens with these things. I don't think people appreciate just how small this place is until they show up. So I have three rooms, and this is the room that was supposed to be nothing but a desk and a chair. And, like, QuickBooks. Not component-level board repair filming for YouTube and... All right, so my, this was sent in for no backlight, and right now I have no light on the charger. Okay, let's, let's see what's going on here. Is it my fault, or is this one of those lovely no backlight boards where they say it's no backlight, but it's dead? This is why I got rid of the no backlight coupon, by the way, for anybody who's wondering. Why don't you fix boards that have no backlight for less money when it's easier? Because it never, ever, ever, ever is. <laughs> It really isn't. It's one of those things where they will say no backlight. I'll say it's dead. They'll say, you're scamming me to get more money. So rather than deal with all that conflict, I just say all board repair is the same price. So I don't care if it's dead. I don't care if it's no backlight. There is no scam. There is no scam because same price either way. Completely removes my motivation to lie. All right, so we have 16 volts coming in from the charger. PP3V42 is putting out 1.24 volts instead of 3.42 volts. Hmm. All right. Oh, joy. Thank God I don't have a no backlight coupon. Oh, my. That was the stupidest idea I ever had in my life. If the only problem is no backlight, we will fix it for cheaper. They send it in saying, it's only no backlight. And then we get it, and it's dead. I'm sorry it's dead. This does not fall under... You killed it, you motherfucker! Oh, uh, no. No. I would say almost every policy that I've set here came as a result of being cursed out by somebody over the phone. Like, every policy that I've set that even seems the tiniest bit mean, I probably got cursed out. That's probably where that came from. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to look through how PP3V42 is created on this board and try to follow along... So let's find it. Where are you? All right. So this, let's see if you can see that. I don't have two monitors anymore. One of my monitors died, so hopefully you see what I see. So I have 16 volts on DC in. I just measured that. Now I want to see where is the, okay, that's going to go through this stuff. So this is 3.42 volt power supply over here, right? So this is input. See? 18 volts going through here, going to V in, which stands for voltage in. So let's see what I have on D7005. 
I'm just going to check at some random points. So this is D7005. Now I want to see what I have coming from the charger. See? Charger. 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 Charger, 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 and R7005. So that's going to come up on pin 2. Pin 2 is going to be up here. And I have 16 volts coming in there. Now let's take a look at what the U7090 area looks like. Let's make sure you see what I see. I see what you see. You see, I see, we all see, I see. Oh. Um, remote. On, my, on output A, C3. Or does that mean the capture card died again? Now I got two things to worry about. My shitty capture card? Aha. And this shitty thing. All right. Here we go. It takes a while to switch. That's what you get when you buy a four-in, two-out HDMI switcher for 35 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> so, but it, it does work. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's make, let's make sure it's in focus for me. Let's make sure it's in focus for you. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not mad at that at all, which is interesting. All right. Let's see if we have a short to ground. Let's put the multimeter in diode mode. Put the red probe on ground, black probe on PP3V42 output, and there's no short to ground over there, but it's not creating 3.42 volts. Hmm. Okay, let's see. So this doesn't look very clean to me. So you see right over here? See, that's not this and this. It just looks like somebody had their way with it. So I want to see what those areas are for and if they actually go to anything. So let's see if those areas actually go to anything here. Okay, so the areas that where something looks a little funny are this. This is uh, R7081. And also... R7096. So if we look on the schematic, R7081 is no stuff, right? This is no stuff. So I don't care about this. This is part of the circuitry for the shutdown pin. SHDN stands for shutdown, which you can find if you Google this number. The idea is that the voltage at this pin needs to be over 2 volts in order for the chip to turn on and work. So what they do is they take the 16 volts coming from the voltage in over here, and they just let that go to the shutdown pin. Makes sense. Now, the other resistor that is missing over here is R7096. R7096 is a 200 kilo ohm resistor in the feedback circuit. So here is going to be output PP3V42. This is where it gets output. And this is a voltage divider that is going to take some of that output and send it back over here to FB. Now, F FB is, uh, let's try to make this sound very simple. And this is probably an explanation that's going to piss off a lot of the engineer folk that watch the channel. Now, the way feedback works in these circuits is very simple. If you don't have feedback, it's going to stop. It's not going to do anything. So let's say that you're driving a car. Your idea, you're, you're, you're moving the car, but your feedback is the fact that you're watching the road. You can see where you're going. If I cover your eyes so that you cannot see where you're going, you're going to stop driving because you don't want to crash into somebody. Your inclination may be to pull over and hit the brakes immediately. The same thing is true here. If the chip cannot see what it's doing, then it's not going to work. It's going to stop doing whatever it's doing. And here, the chip is receiving something different on feedback than it should. So let's go over what's going on here. Now, if you look over here, this is a voltage divider. So what this is going to do is it's going to send a portion of the output, a portion of the 3.42 volts, to feedback. If, now, the whole point of a voltage divider is to lower voltage. So this resistor is going to take the voltage from here and directly apply it here. The second resistor is going to take some of this voltage that was applied to here, and it's going to bring that to ground. If this resistor is gone, then we are going to have a higher voltage going from output to feedback than if this resistor is here. If this resistor is present, it's going to take some of this voltage and send it to ground, which is going to lower it. But that resistor is not present, which means feedback is see, it's thinking it's making more than, it's, than it is. 
So the feedback pin is going to be expecting to see this much voltage, right? So the feedback pin expects to see this much when the voltage divider is working. Because the bottom resistor in the voltage divider is not there, it's seeing this much voltage. Now, the whole idea behind the feedback circuit is it's going to regulate itself based on what it sees. So if it thinks that it's receiving this, if it thinks it's getting this much when it's supposed to be receiving this much, what is it going to do to output? It's going to lower output because feedback is seeing more voltage than it's supposed to. So if feedback sees more voltage than it's used to seeing, it's going to lower the output. So that's why we're getting 1.2 volts on PP3V42 instead of 3.4 volts. And that's why you never, ever, 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 ever fucking do something as stupid as a no backlight discount coupon. Because it just, again, no backlight, no backlight. Imagine if we provided a discount based on the fact that this is no backlight. They would say that, I, again, I, I, I can hear the phone conversation now. I would be in for a 40-minute screaming match saying that I ripped that component off the board. I personally ripped that component off the board so that I could charge more money. And, just did, and the reason I mention this is because I know that there are people watching this channel that want to start their own businesses doing something like this, and I want to save you the fucking misery and the hassle <laughs> of all the, of these mistakes. And that was a terrible, 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 awful, we'll never make again mistake. It's just... No, never, never dealing with that again. So let's get ourselves a 200 kilo ohm. I think I have some 200 kilo ohm, but there's 0603, which won't fit. So I will find myself a 200 kilo ohm that is 0201 right here. And there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is put that 200 kilo ohm resistor on the board, which means turning on my air filter. I love having a foot pedal. Do that. And let's get it started. So this screen is a tester screen, by the way. So if, any, if you want to wonder why I don't appear to care about damaging it or scratching it, it's, it's, it's as damaged and scratched as, as it can get. That, that's its job, is to, just, is to get scratched and abused by me. I know. I know I'm terrible. And so first thing we do is use this iron that's way too big. And we use it to tin the pads. World's most obnoxious iron there for 0201 soldering. Jason keeps taking it and putting that, that tip on. He loves that tip for removing stuff. He uses that tip all the time for removing ICs. It's actually really, really smart. What he does is to remove a lot of different ICs rather than use heat like a hot air, he just touches the top of the IC with that and the IC comes right off the board without heating the rest of the surrounding components. It's a really smart way to go. But Jason's a smart guy, so I expect smart things out of him like that. I didn't grab this very well. Yeah, I didn't. That's going to fly away. I'm not on my soldering game today. Definitely not on my soldering game today. After this, we get to figure out what no backlight is. More appropriate iron. This is the FM2032 with the T30-KN tip, and you'll see that this is much more appropriate. So I added some flux there, and we do that. Move the excess solder, just make a nice little joint. Now when I plug it in, I should get a higher voltage than 1.2 volts on PP3V42. The green light is coming on the board, so that, that's a good thing. Now I'm just going to show you that PP3V42 is restored. 
And as you can see, my screen just activated. So I'm not sure if the light came on, but it did just activate. And believe it or not, the light actually did come on the screen. And I'm going to leave it on long enough for you to see the question mark. So this board was sent in saying no backlight. And the reason that it has no backlight is because it was dead. And again, this is why I, I tell you, provide good customer service, be good to your customers, be kind to your customers, be polite, try to be helpful as often as you can, but where you draw the line is letting the customer tell you what is wrong. If the customer says, I have no backlight, fix no backlight, again, you're going to, do you see that? Okay, well, it's dim because of the studio lighting, but you get the idea. Uh, studio lighting. Uh, but I have a question mark there. If you let the customer choose what's wrong, it, it, it's, it's not going to be their fault. You, you're the one who agreed to it. Therefore, they're going to say that something is going to be wrong. Be polite, be respectful, be kind. Help them with their problem. Fix their problem. Take it seriously. But if, don't let them choose what the issue is. Don't. Because again, if you let the customer choose the issue and then set the price, then it's not that they were wrong. It was that you fucked up fixing it. Or even worse, that you, that you sabotage it. Again, I've had that conversation. Uh, I've had that conversation at least 50 times. It's, it's just very, very bad. Uh, you know, you know, you know and, and technically they are correct. This does have no backlight. And the reason, the reason this had no backlight, the reason this had no backlight is because it was dead. Now it's not dead, therefore it doesn't have no light. And I, and I did go through that with somebody. They actually said, you know, um, well, y you know, it is dead. Yeah, it has no light. And I'm like, but I mean, I feel so bad for all those people that have those discount coupons where they say, this board repair is cheaper than usual, but it only applies if you have no backlight. Again, you're just, 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 what, just be very careful. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to say, be very, very careful in what you offer. You don't want to offer anything where there's, where there's room for people to suspect that you have a motivation to lie to them. And that, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something about feedback circuits. And hopefully this new camera angle is not complete crap. But we'll see you in editing.